Hello, it's Sarah. And I just wanted to say I'm all done. I'm going to share what I did. It's really not, you know, that, you know, it's not rocket science. It's done. I shaded around everything. I glued it together, glued it, shaded, did a little line work. I edged it with my Pen Touch Gold pen. I love these things because I love the color. And that's it. And then I just have to put a hanger on it. I like it. It's super different. All right, you guys. So I'm going to share. If you want to see how I did it, just it's just glowing and shading. It's not that, you know. I think you can figure it out. I like it. All right. Well, that's my doodle flower project. Enjoy. All right, so this is what I'm going to go with. And I'm just going to hope for the best. I'm going to I'm going to glue off camera, but this is weld bond. Weld bond. Non-toxic. It's just a white glue, but it's it's very strong white glue. So I guess I mean that's what it was recommended to me for um, my glass mosaic. So I'm going to do this. I know you can get it online. I think Dick Blick Dick Blick sent it to me too. You can get it from Dick Blick. And I think I'm going to use, uh, I kind of do want to put stems. I think I am going to put stems. So before I glue, this is a chalk pencil. I'm just going to go around the bottom. And... Oops. Chalk, chalk pencil comes right off, generally. I mean, I push harder than most people would because it's just how I am. But this is um, what you can use when you're making a grid for your mandalas. So, because um, I am going to put stems with paint. All right, and I'm I found an old grungy brush, paint brush to put. I'm just going to move these over, keeping them in the same position, so I know where to glue again. All right, so that's where they're going to be. So I'm going to take I'm going to take some leaf green and some of this. And kind of put them both together. I might just well use this. I have leaf green, and I'm gonna use like a long, like a script liner, I think. And so something like this is a number one. I think I want my new, it's called a um, rigger. I don't know where it is. This. This is a rigger. It's a faux squirrel rigger by Dynasty. And I ordered it from the brush guys because um, it's what... her name Tracy Moreau Tracy Morrow so I'm just loading my brush in the darker color add a little bit of water because it's been sitting out it's a little thick and then I'm just gonna pull it through the lighter color and I'm just gonna take it all I'm gonna get more water because it needs to go a little ways maybe I'll Put out some fresh paint, Sarah, because it'll just, it'll be, I'll be happier because I won't have to keep. Alright, so nice wet paint and just drag it through the light color. And then I'm going to hold it like this because I'm just going to have it go. 
and it's a stem so it doesn't have to be um, complete I'm, I'm overloading the brush it doesn't have to be it can be a little um, what am I trying to say like maybe even twisty because it that way it'll give it um, and I, I want to make sure that I start it up in the shape because then oh, I don't need one there see I'm not going to be able to see that one so I'm going to go into the later color can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can see. So, lighter color here as it comes down. Kind of making them fat. I don't care because the flowers are pretty fat, pretty big flowers. The reason I turned the plaque, what is this called, a cradle board to the side is because I can, I have an easier time of making straight lines if I go across. And hopefully they're straight. Yeah, they look a little, yeah, this one looks a little poop like it's going down. But basically just do it however you feel comfortable making a straight line. I mean you can use a ruler or whatever, whatever you want to do to help you get that. Now I didn't put a stem on that one. That's like the only one I didn't put a stem because I feel like that's right in front of it. But I like it. I like that. Okay. So now, now that I know where they are, like this one's not looking. And I just kind of left them kind of I didn't really, I'm not be able to tell you what I'm doing today. My words aren't. <laughs> I left it just loose and, and then I'll, maybe I'll do something else to it to make them sit into it. Like, you know me, I'm going to float probably, right? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I did pick a kind of an older brush. It's not my best brush for sure. But it's not my worst brush because I think all my worst brushes I probably threw out because when I um, glue I like to use a brush so I'm shaking it down because it's pretty empty and I'm just going to put some on this little uh, deli paper and get it from there because it's not going to squirt for me right now and let's go here you want to put a little bit on the surface and a little bit, oops, which one is it? I lost my, oh geez. Oh geez, Sarah. I think it's this one. Nope. It's this one. I think it's this one. I don't know, guys. I, I need to reestablish where stuff was, but I, I do both. I cover you put it on the wood and you put it on the piece and this will dry clear so no worries all right let me figure out what I'm doing here so it was that one I think right why is this all the way up here I think I I I I, I think this one was here but then that orange I don't like. I don't like this orange next to that orange. Oh boy.
I could look at my picture because I don't know that this is exactly right. I think that one was there. Does that look good? I think that looks good. So I'll go off camera and I'll get these all glued down and I'll be back and I'll show you. Let's see what else we're going to do because I haven't thought it through much further than this just gluing and being done but I'm gonna do some more shading I think so I'll be let me just I'll be right back okay um just FYI you guys I did this for video purposes too but it's best to always wait in between steps make sure everything's dry make sure you know just think it through so you don't have mistakes just FYI, okay, because I definitely could have waited for my stems to dry like right here I was wiping it off a little bit with the glue um, I'm gonna go ahead now. I did take a hot um, My heat tool so hopefully the stems are dry, but because I did them lumpy there was some thick and thin parts Just you know take your time, but like okay, so I can definitely see some a chalk line here around this little one right here yeah, you can see that. So right here, there's, and I just, I just actually, I spit on it, which you could totally just dip it in your water. I don't know why I do that, but I, I'm being honest. That's what I do. And there, your little chalk line disappears. It melts away. There's another one, so I'm dipping in water. This one, this yellow flower, it's very subtle, but it, it is there is a chalk line there and because I tried to wipe it before the stems were dry I got green and I smudged green all over the place so I'm gonna use a baby wipe because it doesn't seem like I'm getting under there enough so I just took my nail what what nails I have which I don't have um, so yeah just clean up now I mean if as long as your paints dry you're good but if your paint's not dry, you're going to make a mess. And you'll spoil everything. So don't do it. Oops. I moved it. The glue really sets up fast, so you shouldn't have an issue. Like, look, I mean, it's pretty much like there's a little piece of um, chalk pencil. Just taking that off with a baby wipe. You could totally do this after everything is really, really dry, and then you won't have any issue. All right, I like it. I think I like it. I let. Whoops. Let me zoom back up. I do. I like that I mix them all up. Now, do I need any leaves? Let's take a look because I could paint some leaves on, which I think I might do. And I have several colors. The one thing I noticed is these lighter green ones are going to show up down here. Like if I wanted to put a couple light green ones on these lower flowers, that's where I would put them because they'll show up against the darker green and then I can put any of the other color green the darker greens up in the sky area if they fit like one would totally fit right here on that stem and right here so they're not going to fit everywhere 
but if they fit, I would like to put a stem. I mean, a, a leaf. Now this one I never even made a stem because it was kind of right in the same row. So I'm going to put one of these color. See, I could put this one here. I like to have them going both ways. That one can kind of be pointing down. Why not? And then maybe this one can be pointing down. I'm liking it. I think I do. I'm thinking I'm going to definitely add a couple of leaves. I don't know if I should just keep it two colors. If by putting three colors, I'm getting carried away. So this is that glitter green, and then this is the kind of like a brownish green. I think I'm going to go with just the glitter greens right now, and if I run out, I'll see what happens. And just do the really light greens down here. I'd really like to put one here, but I don't think it, it doesn't fit. And I'd like to put one here, but it doesn't really fit. So I'll paint them in there. And I actually think that's enough. That's plenty. I think I'm going to go with it, though. And maybe I'll make some little tenderly things, or just little, I'll show you. So you take a, like a filbert brush which is just basically, it's like a, a cat's tongue. It has a rounded top to it. And I could make one stroke leaves there. So let me see. This one's a little smaller. I'm going to try it. Just by using the same colors that I used for the um, stems, the little bit of the dark green, and then side load into the other green, and just put... doesn't look very leafy. That looks cute. I like it. And I could put them under here, like definitely with the lighter green. Because you won't, you don't really see it if I don't use the light green. I should paint a couple here. I like to turn the piece when I paint leaves and stuff because right that's enough I don't think I'm gonna paint anymore I mean I could I could just put another one right here because it fits I like it and I mean I probably could put I think I'm out of them no I think I'll leave that with one That looks kind of weird because it's such a big flower it doesn't really do much for it all right I'm gonna glue those leaves down I'll be right back I'm liking it look how pretty it looks OMG okay I'm gonna use some black green now and I am gonna do a little shading because I just want to tweak it and I, this part is fun so basically I'm done you guys I just want to see 
I'm looking for my little angle brush. If I can make a few things pop, you know me. Anywho, all right. So I'm corner loading and I'm going to use, this is black green. So it's a super dark green. That could be a mistake. Maybe I shouldn't go this dark. I don't think I want to go that dark. I'm going to go with... Oh, what should I do? So I only have a few colors out. Um, it is super duper dark, so I think I'll mix it with the um, leaf green. Like, I won't do it full strength, but I definitely want to shade alongside the stems. And it's going to need to be like a two-tony shade because I'm not going to put green in the sky. I, I'm gonna, I could probably do Payne's Gray everywhere. I think Payne's Gray would look good everywhere because I just love Payne's Gray. And it's a very, it's a, this is a really blue version of Payne's Gray. Oh, what the heck. I don't know. And again, like this is probably best done when everything's dry. And even before I put the clay pieces down, it would be good. So this is what I do on all my mixed media pieces to make things stand out. Like, so you can't really see that stem. Well, now you can because, oops, well, not when you put your finger right over your... I have to look at it. That was too crooked. Alright, I need to focus. Let me think. See, that's really super crooked too. And if it's not um, completely dry yet, you can go back. But because I did, um, you can go in and, and erase or take off. But I still see that. So uh, again, I'm just going to be super gentle, which is not my nature, and I'm going to go. I'm I'm going to go around the left side of everything. So around the flowers. Let's see. And this is a tiny brush because I will tend to. Um. My floats will be. A, a lot smaller. Yeah, it's not going to work. I got to go to my normal size brush. Got to keep it Sarah style. Um, I need more water on my brush because that's how you get it to float out. And I'm going to make it choppy and I'm going to make it mixed media style. And that's just how it's going to be. I'm going to go down the left sides. I know I'm holding the piece up, but I got a glare. And I need to be able to see. So I'm going to go around. And around the leaves. See, it would have been so much easier to do before I had put the flowers on. Maybe if I would have traced all the way around them. But I think we're going to get uh, a little bit of what I'm looking for. I'm going to go down this side, this side. Payne's gray looks fine on the green. I mean, the black green would look perfect, but this is going to be fine. I just got to hold it up and take a look. I think that really helps a lot. Um, instead of it just being super bright behind it, My brush is bumping into the other flowers. Yep, 
You can totally do this with a Faber Castell big brush. Uh, as long as you can get your fingers in there to, you know, to to blend it. But it's it's just to put a little shadow around things to make them kind of just not be sitting right on top of the surface. You want them to show that they're part of the background. I think Ginny, not Ginny Baker, my do my son's dog name is Ginny, it, she lives here again, um, is trying to do something. I don't know if she's trying to get outside or what. James is in the basement. All right, I'm going to come back when I'm all done. All right, so it's all shaded. I'm going to take that rigger, which is the liner brush, and the black green that I put out, and I am just going to do some line work. I just feel like it would make it look much sharper. So I'm getting this into an ink-like consistency. I have two fans blowing on me. It's like 100 degrees out today. Well, not maybe not 100, but very close. i um, going to just take it and gently... Um, all right, I'll zoom in because maybe so I want to just go around and make them look more leafy and give the stem a little line too. So it goes down to here and on both sides. Um, you could totally do this with um, your mixed media pens. But I just, I felt like using a brush. I haven't done this in a long time. And I just really wanted to use a brush. This seems like it's coming out really um, thick. As far, like there's, there are much thinner lines that you can make with a liner brush. But I just have, this is a new brush for me, a rigger. And so I just wanted to try it and see what I got and I think for this project it's fine because it's a mixed media piece and it's not real delicate um, So mainly like the main I you got to get the, the paint really thin thin it down and load your brush to a point and then I'm just going to try and go like And if it skips down the side, that's okay. Like, I don't need it to be perfect. Just the illusion. But I think that just makes it look a little more crisper. And again, because the flowers are dimensional, they're sticking out, my hand is totally bumping into, see this, this stem finished right here. And then this is another stem. But my hand is totally bumping into the clay and it's awkward. That looks awkward, but whatever. I'm not hating it. I am actually, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. 
I don't even think I was in the shot just then, but whatevs. It's whatevs. Oopsie. Definitely turning your piece is awesome. You have to make sure that you can reach. See, like that's really kind of off. So I'll come back and do it again. There we go. Alright, I think I did them all. And it actually made it look messier. Let me zoom back up. But I think from a distance, so it's like a Monet, right? <laughs> That's from Clueless. She goes, it's like a Monet. Up close, it's a big old mess, but far away, from far away, it looks good. But up close, it's a big old mess. But I like it. Um, I could also do just some, like, liney marks along the bottom. Kind of like grass. You're not going to really see that. That's not the right color. Uh, so there's so much you could do. I want to thank Ginny again for her such a great idea. I love it so much. I think it turned out really cool. I'm just looking at it myself. I like it. So that's it, you guys. It is my doodle flower in polymer clay. And that's it. Thanks for watching.